I don't know about you, but I've never been able to figure which goes with what. Most of us have been scolded for poor table manners at least once. We have also all acquired habits that we might not even realize could be considered rude in other parts of the world. Here are the 15 weirdest food etiquette rules from around the world. Cleaning your plate. China. And when I say clean plate club, this time I mean that quite literally. How many times as a kid did you have to stay at the dinner table until you finished everything on your plate? And while here it's customary to clean your plate, in China it's considered a major faux pas. Eating everything on your plate suggests that your host didn't serve you enough food and that you were still hungry, which is a big insult. Instead, leaving just a little bit of food left over shows that you were fed perfectly. Aha! <laughs> No. If you go to India or Japan, however, leaving food implies a great disrespect towards the host and to the food as it is seen as wasteful. The best way to let people know your food was amazing in China? Make a mess. Food around the dinner table and the plate is a way of complimenting the chef on a job well done. No extra cheese, please. Italy. That's amazing, my god. Cheese is arguably one of the best things about pizza, pasta, and basically any meal with a hearty sauce. In America, we're used to cheesing things up to the fullest and simply adding it to as many things as we possibly can. But if you're ever traveling in Italy and you're suddenly tempted to do the same, it might be best to refrain from doing so. No! No! If the cheese is not explicitly offered to you, don't ask for it. And under no circumstances should you ask for Parmesan on your pizza. It's considered almost a sin to put extra cheese on a pie, especially if that cheese is Parmesan. Word of advice, if you don't want the waiters to look at you with disdain, stick to the amount of cheese you're given. And besides, they probably know better anyway when it comes to great pizza. Saying thank you. India. I never said thank you. And you'll never have to. While in most countries, thank you is considered good manners, the magic words aren't always welcome in India. In formal situations, saying thank you is perfectly fine, but if you're at a dinner table with your friends and family, it can be downright insulting. By thanking them, it's like you're implying that they went out of their way to do something special for you, when from a cultural point of view, passing dishes around or offering to help are things that should be done naturally. And often comes off as sarcastic, inadequate, Take this seriously. or as a favor that will need to be returned one day. In other words, to avoid insulting your close entourage, don't thank them around the table. Otherwise, they'll think you view the relationship as more formal than friendly. Slurping your food. Japan. Slurp, slurp, slurp. We all know at least one loud eater. You know, the person no one wants to sit next to when you're having spaghetti because you just know that you're in for? Well, as it turns out, in Japan, these kinds of manners at the dinner table aren't annoying at all. They're encouraged. Slurping when eating noodles and soups is a sign that you're enjoying your meal and shows your appreciation. Heaven. That's ten. Not only is it a sign of respect, but it's also believed to improve the flavor of your noodles while allowing you to enjoy it hot more quickly. Basically, the louder you slurp, the better. Another very unusual thing in Japan is to drink directly from the soup bowl, since spoons aren't as common. So if you're ever in Japan, don't hold back your slurps and make sure to enjoy your noodles as loud as you can. Don't salt your food. Egypt and Portugal. You see what's wrong with this? In America, keeping a salt and pepper shaker on the table is customary. You never know when you'll need to add a little S and P, so it's always good to know you have the option to season your food a tad bit more. If you go to Egypt or Portugal, on the other hand, if salt and pepper aren't already on your table, asking for some is considered to be extremely rude, especially if you haven't even tried the dish yet. What? It implies that you're questioning the chef's cooking and skills, which in a way makes perfect sense. 
By adding your own seasoning, you're effectively changing the taste, meaning what the cook prepared wasn't to your liking. Just trust the chefs. If they haven't put out any extra spices, they know what they're doing. Don't clink your glass. Hungry. Cheers, bro! When you're toasting happily and loudly saying cheers, chances are you will clink your glasses together before taking a sip. But in Hungary, you might want to avoid doing this at all costs unless you want to be yelled at by older patrons. The clinking of glasses is supposedly a politically charged action from back when Austrian leaders used to publicly celebrate the execution of Hungarian rebels by toasting. Therefore, it is a reminder of those particularly dark times in Hungarian history. Don't do it! Most of the younger generations, however, seem to be slowly letting go of that tradition and do clink their glasses. But just to make sure you don't offend anyone, it might be a good idea not to do it at all. You never know. Turning a fish over, China. Come on, man. This etiquette rule might seem a little specific and weird at first, but it also has a very significant meaning behind it. If you ever find yourself eating a whole fish while in China, flipping the fish over to get to the meat on the other side is not an option. Yes, it may sound like the most logical way to eat it, but turning the bones over is associated with turning your back on someone you're supposed to be loyal to, essentially becoming a traitor. It was said that you would destroy this and not join them. But beyond the betrayal, it's also considered to invite bad juju, according to an old fishing superstition. Flipping a fish over is said to invite disaster down onto the fishing boats as it could cause them to capsize. If you want to avoid all of the bad luck, just don't flip your fish and you should be good to go. Fork versus hands. Mexico and Chile. Gracias, senor. Depending on where you are in the world, the rules for utensils can differ. Here, for example, we use forks for most of our meals, but the occasional pizza, burgers, and fries requires us to resort to our hands to get the job done. In Mexico, no matter what you eat, using a fork and knife is considered an almost snobby practice, and most meals are eaten with your hands. This is great. In India, the Middle East, and some parts of Africa, eating with your hands is also encouraged only not with your left hand, since it's considered unclean. Sorry, lefties. But in Chile, touching any part of your meal with your hands is seen as ill-mannered. Yes, that includes burgers. It might be hard to remember all these cutlery rules, but once you have them down, you'll be able to switch from hands to fork faster than the speed of light. Split the bill. France. Hey, so are we thinking separate checks? When you go out to eat with a group of people, splitting the bill is pretty much the norm. Well, unless you're in France. In that case, there should be no splitting nonsense. Either you offer to pay for the whole thing or let someone else do it. There should be no in-between. That's because in France, talking about money isn't the most classy thing. So splitting the bill is seen as the height of unsophistication. He's happily paid the check. There you go. It's also standard there to fight over the bill. French people tend to keep track of who paid last and whose turn it is to pick up the tab. Of course, no rule is set in stone, so if you're with larger tables, younger crowds, or meeting with the same people often, occasional splitting may happen. You also need to be precise in your invitation, as it will most likely let the other party know if you intend to pay or not. No hands on your lap. Russia. Welcome to our dinner. If you're ever dining somewhere in Russia and you don't know what to do with your hands while you wait for your food, no matter what you do, don't ever put them on your lap. Resting your wrists on the table is much more polite and respectful than keeping them on your lap. Also, at a dinner party, the host must fill your plate with a generous amount of food more than once as a way to emphasize that there's plenty to go around. You can always decline a second serving, but never a shot of vodka. Zazdorovia. Vodka is a symbol of trust and friendship, and refusing a shot is seen as disrespectful, and so is mixing it with any anything else. Yes, even ice. Another thing, always keep your fork in your left hand and knife in your right, as Russians follow standard European table manners. Tricky coffee business, Italy. Where I go drinking the coffee. 
that's lifestyle for me. When you want coffee, you get coffee no matter how you like it. But in Italy, it's a little more complicated than that. It's not exactly a secret that coffee is extremely serious business in Italy. It comes with a set of rules that need to be followed. For starters, never order milk in your coffee after 11 a.m. Ordering a cappuccino in the afternoon or evening would earn you a couple of dirty looks or even straight-up refusal, as it is a long-standing belief that milk interferes with digestion. Also, once you've ordered your coffee, don't sit around to sip it. Just down it and be on your way. Done. And do not order any complicated drinks. Just stick to plain, authentic coffee. Remember, when in Rome, garbage on the floor. Spain. Garbage day! Ever since we were kids, we've been explicitly taught not to litter. However, if you head over to Spain, litter can be a very good indicator whether or not a restaurant is good. Well, at least in bars. Indeed, it is a widespread practice to throw your napkins, olive pits, and even cheese rinds on the floor. Ew! Ew! What the and the dirtier the floor, the better the place is. A little unusual, surely, but the reasoning behind it actually makes a lot of sense. The better the food a place has, the busier it gets, and the busier it is, the more trash will be on the floor. So next time you're in Spain and you're looking for the best tapas place, just look at the amount of trash on the floor. Who would have thought that garbage would ever be seen as inviting? Wine rules, Georgia. Yes, boss. In Italy, coffee is the drink of choice, and in Georgia, it's wine. Wine lives in the heart of Georgian culture, and it obviously comes with a lot lot of precise etiquette rules that are crucial to know before traveling there. For instance, refusing a glass of wine without a plausible excuse is considered rude. Unless you have stomach, liver, or heart problems, it is a custom that you have a glass in hand. Women aren't expected to drink anything, but for men, it is seen as a test of strength and manliness. If you see I have plenty of wine, about 50, 100 bottles of wine. As for toasts, you should only toast with wine or vodka never soft drinks or beer. Toasting with beer is only for when you want to wish bad luck on someone. Oh, and never sip your wine. The entire glass is meant to be drunk at once after each toast and then filled and ready for the next one. Forks don't go in mouths. Thailand. Humans use these little babies to straighten their hair out. Here's another etiquette rule involving forks that can be tricky to remember. Well, it definitely was for the Little Mermaid. Most of us have had Thai food at least once in our lives, and everybody can attest to just how delicious it is. So delicious, in fact, that you might be tempted to just shove the entire meal in your mouth without a second thought. Then I love Thai food. <laughs> But there are some things you need to know before doing so. For noodle dishes, you'll be given chopsticks, and everything else will come with a fork and spoon. In your right hand, you'll have your spoon, and in the left, your fork. But that fork won't be for eating. It is simply there to get food from the plate to the spoon or to cut smaller pieces. The fork never goes in your mouth. Also, you were meant to eat sticky rice with your fingers instead of your spoon. Just some Something to think about next time you're chowing down your pad thai. Pass the port to the left, Britain. Come on, order port. I did. Port is a sweet, strong wine originating in Portugal. British tradition dictates that decanters of port should be passed around the table in a clockwise direction, never the opposite. The reason for this particular rule is a bit unclear. One theory from back in the day says you need to keep your right hand free in case you had to grab a sword. On guard! Skills I've acquired over a very long career. Another could simply be that port also means the left side of a ship, and this has been the drink of choice for Royal Navy toasts for the longest time. And what if someone gets distracted and doesn't pass you the port? You simply need to ask, do you know the Bishop of Norwich? And most people will immediately know it's a reference to pass the port. We've got more. Just tap or click another video. And hey, leave us a comment, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell.